Good afternoon and welcome to this presentation. Um, it's more yes, of a, it's more of a conversation than a presentation. Um, between Karen, Jeanette, and myself. My name is Steve Judd. I'm the chair of the Network Literacy Community of Practice, and we're going to be talking about using Google Apps um, for collaboration between staff and volunteers, and really all kinds of online tools. The Network Literacy Community of Practice is part of the Military Families Learning Network, and um, if you're not familiar with it, I would invite you to look up the Military Families Learning Network on eextension.org and become familiar with it. Uh, we, our mission is to provide research and evidence-based professional development to military family service professionals, and those are people who work with military families. There are a couple links here. If you're if you're new to the network literacy community of practice, we're active on Google Plus. Uh, somehow I missed the uh, Facebook link here, but we have a Facebook page. Uh, we have a Twitter account, and there's a YouTube uh, channel as well, where this recording will be posted, and then it will be also be linked to from the Learn event itself. So what I want to talk about today is I have with me Karen Jeanette. Karen, can you say hi so we make sure your microphone works? I, I can say hi. And Steve, <laughs> just to let you know, I don't think the slides are advancing for the rest of us. So. They aren't. Oh, well, let's see what we can do here. It always works that way, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's why it's good to have two people on at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now I see your screen. Yeah, there we go. You're advancing. Great. Sorry about that, folks. Um, the slides themselves are available in the GoToMeeting pod that you sort of have on the right of your screen, probably. Uh, there's a section called Materials, and you can get the slides uh, for what they're worth. They're really just talking points for this conversation uh, discussion between Karen and myself about uh, our experience with the Extension Master Gardener social media training site that we were part of setting up. Um, and so, Karen, maybe you could talk a little bit about your role in this project, and then we'll go on from there. Sure. Um, well, from 2007 uh, through about 2013, I was basically a community of pr practice support specialist, so I helped uh, the Extension Master Gardener Community of Practice with the Extension um, in in all sorts of online collaboration ways. Um, I set up webinar discussions and um, helped facilitate um, the beginning of a social media team, a national social media team with Extension Master Gardeners. Um, and that came to an end um, in two, about 2013, which was about the same time we did a survey and we um, determined interest by coordinators and um, from volunteers across the country that they wanted to um, go forward with creating a social media training. Um, and so at that time, um, we assembled a task force and um, I stayed on as a volunteer member of the task force. Um, I am working now on the Military Families Learning Network project, um, but this has certainly been kind of a, a volunteer thing I've continued to do, along with you know, some several Extension Master Gardener volunteers and some coordinators, different state and county coordinators, as well as um, several staff members um, who have helped to 
um, become a member of this training task force. So that's kind of how we got our start and who's who was involved. Um, I think I was looking back at our notes and we started our first meeting where we just decided what to work on um, in May of 2014. So we're getting pretty close to completion. Um, and it's been a really uh, wonderful process being able to collaborate with people from across the country um, to create this training. Yeah, and it, it has taken um, what seems like a while. It's a year and a half. Um, and I think, you know, from my perspective, I get thrown into a lot of collaborative teams, some of them just within my own organization here at work. Um, I'm at the University of New Hampshire. And I think there are different challenges um, for different types of teams. So when I'm thinking just in terms of the state of New Hampshire, it's kind of easy. We're all in the same state, the same time zone. We all have the same technology tools at our disposal. Um, and as the map that should be up on your screen now shows, this task force was a lot different, wasn't it, Karen? Yeah, yeah. We have people from all over. Um, and um, I, I think we have... I've met everybody in face to face except one person. But um yeah, different time zones and actually a lot of times um past collaborations I usually get east coast and central time zone and this we had every single time zone. Um so that that was an interesting feat to just try and find a good time to meet. And that's very true. So we may not have had every single time zone, but we certainly had every time zone in the continental United States. Um, and it was a challenge. And I think that's one of the things that you need to think about when you're doing collaborative work is um, how do you find the time when you can all meet <laughs> at a something that's convenient? And I think one of the things we did was, I th didn't we initially do um, like some doodle polls to find availability of time for people? Yeah, I think we did that several, maybe two or three times at the beginning and, and, and that is a good way to start off, but after a while um, it just helps, <laughs> it helps to find a common time which we can all meet um, kind of consistently. So I think we ended up moving, as you say, on the slides here. Yeah, I think PM Eastern. we settled in on 2 p.m. Eastern, and, and you may notice that's also when we started um, this presentation, and it seems as though Extension has settled on that as a decent time, mainly because it, um, looking again across the country, we're continental U.S. centric, I suppose, um, it means that it's, you know, 11 o'clock on the Pacific time zone. So it's something that seems to fit into the middle of the day for people. And for our group, Fridays just seem to work. Um, but one of the things, you know, in looking at the people who were members of our group, um, you can see that they represented, uh, you know, four or five different institutions, if you will, um, all of whom had different technology. We also had um, at least two volunteers who were not directly affiliated with an institution. They didn't have the technological support, if you will, the technical support from a university helping them with the tools that they had available to meet. And I think that presented challenges on its own. First was how do we communicate with each other? Um, and we fell back on, I think, when we started out email and phone. Is that correct, Karen? Yeah, I think our first meeting was a hangout, but that kind of didn't turn out so well because of some bandwidth issues and 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 whatnot. So we went back to conference call after that first hangout, I believe, for quite a while. Yeah, and I think, you know, for some of us, we're, you know, sitting at universities or somewhere where we have good broad broadband access and it's nice to have something like a hangout or a go-to meeting or webex or or whatever form of communication um, 
but when we had a volunteer in rural New Mexico, um, she didn't have necessarily the broadband to be able to participate in that. So we, everyone as a group went back to using phone and conference calls. Um, but what we found was that for some of us, we still wanted to have sort of that, what I call higher bandwidth communication where we could see each other. Um, we could see documents that we were working on together. Um, so what we ended up doing was using Google Hangouts, um, however, still including an option for the phone so that people could call into a conference call line, be a part of the Hangout, and they might not experience the video back and forth, but they were still able to um, participate you know, verbally. One thing I will say is that as we, as you collaborate, as we collaborated, email is still seems to be the one thing that works for everyone. Um, and Karen, maybe you can talk about your role as sort of the project leader or task force leader in this on how you used email to sort of keep us on task and aware of what was going on. Sure. Well, I, there's always that balance between providing too much email and not enough. And so um, as far as keeping us all on task, we did end up, I would say we ended up having meetings probably every other week, especially during the development phase where we're putting together just modules, you know, putting together the actual um, modules and slide sets. And so um, at the beginning of those weeks, I would send out a reminder and I'd create, you know, links and phone conference info. Um, and I would also send an update in the body of the email. So one thing I've realized over these years is I used to try and put everything um, like in another document and send people the link, but people couldn't see what was in that link and so they didn't click on it. So I just provide a little bit of an update about who's doing what and really try and get a, give it a little personal flavor so people would understand how the team um, who was working on what and um, then by the time we would get together later that um, week, people could have a pretty good snapshot of where we were. Um, so I tried to do that um, and then I'd also follow up um, usually the day before with a reminder and then the morning of with the connection information just so people didn't have to go digging for links um, to connect. So that was kind of the pattern that um, we developed to, to keep people in the loop. Um, and then aside from that, we really tried not to make a lot of our um, collaboration through email, um, but we certainly did send documents back and forth while we were collaborating. So that's kind of a, a just a nutshell. Yeah, and I have to say I really appreciated um, <laughs> sort of your your email updates, keeping reminding us of what was going on, what we had talked about at the last meetings, um, what was coming up and, and those sorts of things. And, you know, it's a situation where I think in some uh, collaborative teams, you may have a dedicated project management software, maybe using Basecamp or something else where all of that stuff can live. Um, and we didn't really have that, but I think just through email, we were able to do some of that. One of the things that, that I noticed in our, in our collaboration was that we sort of started out using uh, the extension create space. So that's the, the Drupal site where you can create document, you know, upload documents, create pages and that sort of thing. And other people um, have the ability to edit them, view them, that sort of thing. But can you talk a little bit about where that might have, that wasn't sufficient for us to use that for the entire project? Sure, sure. Well, so it's what eExtension Create is basically, we've always found this out, it's where the content managers <laughs> spend their time. And so I, I was one of those people for a long time. So I can organize things and interlink things and create handbooks, but that's because it's a familiar environment to me. Um, and so we use create, there's a feature where you can just create group news and it creates a chronological list of your, your news, your 
documents. Um, so that was helpful from that standpoint. But when we really got going and trying to tried to put notes together, the the create environment is really stripped down, and it's that way purposefully because it's not the purpose of create to to really um, it's created to create what web content on a public site. It's not created for like internal collaboration um, in the sense that maybe Google Docs is. You can't really throw images around and um, put comments on like a Google Doc. So we just started migrating to Google Docs um, at the beginning because it was just so much easier to post ideas and um, have conversations in the side margins of those docs. And um, it was also it, everybody on the team had a Google account, so we could just share those with their Google accounts, or share it with, share them with um, the setting anyone with a link. And that just was, that's a very overlooked tool, I think, that being able to share a document with um, basically an unlisted URL, um, which is the setting share with anyone with a link. So um, I think those um, features helped us. And then I might be getting ahead of myself here, Steve, but I'm just going to keep going for a second and you can you, you stop keep, me if you need to. No, keep going. <laughs> um, but then we were in the Google Docs and the Google Docs got long, you know, and that people were getting lost They because we would organize things in one Google Doc and kind of say, this is what we want to do in Module 1, and then we just put Module 2 below it, and pretty soon people really needed to see things separated out. Um, and so we had an idea that, that maybe we could put this in a WordPress site or something like that, um, but then, I don't know, you and I had a discussion, Steve, about, well, what about Google Sites? And my experience with Google Sites from the past is that it's kind of disorienting to just set it up, and so I think that's when I asked you to just try it out. You know, Could you just organize these modules into their own little compartments in, in a Google site. And I think once we got there, people felt they just, you know, breathed a sigh of relief that there was some kind of organization um, in that regard. So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about setting that up because you're the one that really uh, put that together. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things I would emphasize is that we use the um, Google Apps through e-extension. So um, for anybody on here that's not familiar, um, once you have an e-extension ID, you have access to the e-extension Google Apps setup, which kind of helps you keep separate that particular aspect of your work or your life from your personal Google account. Although, I don't know, I always seem to intermingle them anyway. Um, but you know, we were able to create a, sort of a shared folder that everyone on the task force, anything that we put into that folder was shared amongst everyone. Um, and as Karen said, we started out with just Google Docs. So we started, you know, outlining what we wanted the course to be in a doc, and then we started fleshing out that outline in the same doc. And pretty soon it was, you know, 10, 12 pages long, and you had to skip around to all these different places. And we were trying to build structure um, that we wanted to see in a website in a document, and it wasn't really that suitable for it. So as Karen mentioned, we had a discussion and decided, you know what, let's try and use Google Sites, which is a essentially a website building tool offered by Google and is part of the e-extension apps um, and use that so that we could actually apply some structure to what we were thinking because it it was getting really hard even for me who thinks in these sort of website structure things to see it shining through in the doc itself um, so I set up the skeleton of the site and essentially just took each section of the Google Doc that we were working on and put it in as a placeholder on the site. The nice thing was everyone already had their e-extension ID. They had access to the Google 
um, apps environment, and we could just make them an editor within the Google site. So everyone was able to work within the site itself, just editing web pages. Um, it also offers a comment functionality, so people were able to, if they weren't comfortable actually editing a page, they could um, put in their comments there. And it started to take shape. Um, and then we decided, well, if we were going to be doing presentations, if we did them in uh, the Google Slides format, we'd be able to embed them directly into the site. So Google Slides allowed us all to collaborate on the slide presentations and then also embed them directly within the site. Similarly, we did knowledge checks or little um, you know, four or five question quizzes at the end of each module. And um, I was able to do that within Google Sheets you know, which is the spreadsheet uh, of Google, to create a form that allowed people to do a simple knowledge check just to see if they had, uh, you know, sort of gained the knowledge that they hoped they would um, during that module. And those also were able to be embedded in the Google Sites. And if we have a little time at the end, maybe we can pull up the site and take a quick look at it. It's you know, probably in terms of web design, it's not the prettiest site in the world, but uh, in terms of functionality and structure, I think it really got us where we wanted to go. Um, I'll just, I think I see that, um, I think Karen put the link in the uh, chat pod, or Jerry did, so if anybody wants to take a look at it, they're they're free to look at it. And I would encourage anyone, if you have questions or comments as we go along, to uh, feel free to put them in the chat pod, or um, everybody has the ability to um, use your mic to ask a question out loud if you'd like to do that as well. So when all was said and done, we ended up with um, quite a toolbox here, and, uh, you know, I think we've talked about how each of these worked. Um, Karen wrote a blog post today um, where she talks about some of the different tools, some that I didn't put on this list, including things like board thing and doodle polls and that, that sort of thing. And so that link um, is there if you'd like to go and see her blog post where she talks about these different tools and how we use them. Karen, were there any other tools that you wanted to highlight that, that came in handy while we were working on this? Um, well, aside, I'm trying to think. Well, you know, Qualtrics, it's interesting. I think the other thing, one of the things we wanted to do was create a site that was open because we knew that if volunteers were going to take a social media training, they were also going to need to come back and reference the resources when they actually needed to use them. And so we didn't want to have people forget passwords and then not be able to get in. And so that was one of the big reasons I think we went to the Google site. Um, or we're thinking about open ways of hosting this. Um, and uh, Qualtrics, um, I would add Qualtrics to the toolbox, just that it's a really interesting way to create a certification quiz. And, and all they have to do, it's basically survey software, so you can enter your name and email, fill out the questions, and the certificate will um, go back to you. Um, and you don't have to remember a password like you would for Moodle or another site. And so I thought that was another really useful tool um, that we use that, you know, it's not exactly your first idea of how you would use Qualtrics. It's kind of a survey instrument, but we used it to generate a certificate um, or a quiz and a certificate um, that was automated. So that, I'd add that. Yeah, and on your, um, you were talking sort of about the openness, not wanting people to have to log in and things like that. And I, I think that was another um, idea behind the way we did things in that um, we were assembling pieces that other folks would be able to reuse. So for instance, the slide decks um, are in Google Slides. They're publicly available 
if someone wanted to, they could take and embed those Google Slides on their own site. Um, so if they just wanted to feature one particular module, they'd be able to do that. Um, or if someone wanted to take and remix uh, some of the some of the site to create uh, maybe a social media training for some other group, uh, they would be able to do that. And so early on, we talked about some of the intellectual property issues around that um, and decided that essentially we were going to license everything in a creative commons way so that it is available for people to to reuse if they so desired. Um, and I think that was a good discussion to have because it and a good mindset to have because it got us thinking about what we were doing in a way that went beyond the specific uh, job at hand, if you will. So I just wanted to touch on, I know Jerry had asked uh, Karen a few questions uh, prior to the webinar about some of the issues, considerations that came up, and, and I just wanted to sort of have this slide up as, a, as something for us to react to, um, but something that comes up in all collaborative work, I think, is how did we decide, Karen, who did what in the project? Maybe you can talk about that because I thought it was interesting. Sure. I have a big smile on my face. Connie and Karen, you'll have to put your uh, comments in the chat because you have experience with, with this. Um, how, who does what? Um, I would say that we basically held meetings and talked about what we were doing. And then um, we asked questions about who would like to do it. And so it was very democratic and um, we really based how we would do things, I think, off of self-selection. Um, sometimes I think we also assigned each other um, roles because we knew people had certain interests or certain gifts and, and would be well-suited. So um, that's kind of my perception of how we assign things. but. Um, Steve or, or Connie or Karen, if you're still on the call and, and want to type in or comment on that, um, it'd be interesting to hear other team members' perspectives. Yeah, I, I thought what was interesting is, you know, I've been a member of teams where sort of things were assigned. Um, whether you wanted to do them or not, um, people had that assignment. This was a very different kind of collaboration in that um, essentially everyone in a way was a volunteer. Um, there was, you know, I don't think there was really a mandate from anyone or there was no one, you know, saying when you get this done, you'll get paid X for doing it. It was much more a, a project of uh, everyone's combined passions that they felt this was important and wanted to get done. And so people just gravitated to the subjects or the tasks that they were comfortable with, um, that they had some expertise in or want to learn more about, and kind of got those things done. And so I, I was very, quite honestly, I was impressed that we <laughs> did get the things done that we did without someone, uh, you know, sort of forcing each of us to do it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, at some weeks we'd surprise ourselves. We'd come and be like, "Wow, um, I'm so impressed with you all." <laughs> um, and sometimes we'd say, "I'm I'm impressed with myself," um, because it was just you know you just didn't know. And I I read a lot about collaboration, and they talk about it being messy. Um, and sometimes the mess scares people off, but in another way, it can be really gratifying and really um, just a really great experience to get to know people because um, somehow it 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 ends it ends up working out. Yeah, and Jerry's asking in the chat, did we all know each other before joining the project? Um, and so I can speak for myself and say I did not know everyone. I think I had met. Uh, you know, obviously I knew Karen, 
uh, fairly well, and I had met a couple of the others or had interacted with them online, but no, I certainly didn't know everyone involved in the project. Um, Karen, the rest of you were all sort of knew each other from the Master Gardener world, is that right? Um, yes and no. So um, Connie, Sylvia, Nicole, Martini worked together with the National Extension Master Gardener team, um, posting things to Facebook and the blog. Um, so I think that's how that the three of them knew each other and myself. Um, we, I knew Nicole Pinson through some other work with eExtension. I, I think I helped her um, discuss how to set up Ask an Expert at one time, if I'm not mistaken. And then Steve, of course, we worked together. And then Karen Vines I met out on Twitter because um, we were talking about um, creating sticky messages, I think was the tweet. Um, and I just thought she might be someone that was interested in this cause. And so, um, yeah, every, I think I knew everybody, but then as a team, we got to know each other through this collaboration. Yeah, and I see Connie is agreeing, and she's saying that the self-selection worked well because it kind of helped us stay on track and everybody was working on an area that they were comfortable with. So I, th I think that's, that's good. Um, one of the things I think that, that also happened in this project, and I think can be really important in, in doing this kind of work, is um, we didn't necessarily force people to use a tool that they weren't particularly comfortable with. Um, so for instance, um, you know, Sylvia was very comfortable using PowerPoint to create her slides, um, not so much uh, Google Slides. And so what did you do about that, Karen? Well, um, I think, well, she ended up, from what I gather, I think she ended up using Google Drive on her Mac so she could create a PowerPoint and then hook it up to Google Drive. Um, other people, and this is the case with Google Slides, sometimes it's just hard to create good graphics and good layouts in Google Slides. It's easier in PowerPoint. So I think a lot of times people would just send me their PowerPoints and then I'd upload it to Google Slides and try and embed it or give it to you to embed into the site. I think that's how that worked most of the time. So um, we had a lot of different versions of PowerPoints and, and then we'd upload them to Google Slides and so I think that's how we handled that situation. Yeah and I think we did the same thing with some docs too is that they somehow started out as a well like for the uh, when we did some of the user testing we had an Excel spreadsheet and as we all we're talking about, okay, everyone has a copy of the Excel spreadsheet and we were gonna try and color code things and do all this. It was like, hold, wait, just one second. <laughs> we uploaded it to Google Drive, turned it into a, a document or a Google Sheets document that everyone could edit simultaneously. And then we we're able to collaborate much more effectively instead of doing some sort of track changes hell that goes on when you don't have that kind of collaborative tool. Um, and then one last thing I just wanted to touch on is the we had to make, I, in my mind, we made a number of compromises on the tools that we used in that um, I don't think that each tool that we used was necessarily the best tool for the job. So, um, you know, as you were saying, Google Slides may not be the best environment to create rich graphics and, and people are more comfortable with PowerPoint and you can do a little bit more there. Um, but I think that we made those compromises in an effort to make things that worked in this collaborative environment. Um, that, you know, we, it might, you might be able to create a prettier document in Word or WordPerfect or whatever your tool of choice is than you could in uh, Google Docs, but because of the fact that it's so easy to edit simultaneously in Google Docs, we decided that that was, a, that was more important to us as a team than was necessarily having the uh, best-in-class tool for that. Do you think that's true, Karen? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think you're all, we were always balancing how to get things done with, of course, we wanted to create a useful um, and, and high quality product, um, but at the same note, we, we needed to collaborate and, and get moving forward. So I think that's how we viewed things. And, and one other thing to consider is you always have to be open to is there another level of enhancement? So whatever we did here, these Google Slides can be adapted and moved somewhere else and enhanced, you know. Um, so that's one thing for the Google Slides, but I, I feel like even the Google site, just the fact that it's organized now and um, makes sense and we've been able to integrate um, certain modules together just by hyperlinks and that kind of thing. At, le at least it's organized from now and that could always be translated to something fancier, but um, I don't know. So it, it'll be interesting to hear our additional feedback. We went through user testing a couple weeks ago um, and I don't believe anybody complained too much about the the interface itself, you know. Um, Karen Vines and Connie um, were involved and they're on the call, so they might be able to tell us more if, if that was the case. And of course, I, I think there's a few people on the call that have gone through it during user testing, so they might be able to, to tell us if they felt like we needed better bells and whistles. Yeah, and I would certainly invite anybody who's on uh, right now to go ahead, if you're muted, unmute your microphone and chime in ask us questions, um, make comments, talk about your own experience with some of these collaborative tools. Because I, th I think the important thing, like I said, was we had to make compromises uh, in certain areas just so we could get everything done that we wanted to get done. Um, I know as Connie said in the in the chat, you know, she enjoyed learning about the different ways, you know, using Hangouts and, and using Google Docs and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, as Karen said, we had a very diverse group. Um, you know, we weren't all a bunch of techies that were enamored with a shiny tool, but that we were actually trying to get something done. And as Karen said, I think that really helped us uh, along the way. Jerry, you wanted to ask something? Yeah, I'm kind of curious, you know, about, you know, part of what I'm getting my head around or, or listening to is how your team developed over time, you know, and maybe some of the changes that occurred as you started working together, um, you know, as a, as a group of collaborators. And I'm kind of curious whether, you know, did everyone, would you say that everyone on the team started off very familiar with working in a collaborative fashion, um, you know, comfortable with the idea of, like, building content together at the same time, as opposed to everyone sort of going off and doing their thing and coming back with whatever they produced. Can you, can you speak to that a little bit? I mean, I guess, was everyone already kind of comfortable in that mode, or was there, there kind of a transition for folks? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'll answer this, and Steve, I'm sure you'll have ideas, and Connie and Karen as well. Um, I, I think that, that everybody, to some degree, had a comfortable uh, uh, an okayness okay to learn or, or be comfortable. Like, I think at some, at some time, time or another, there was a new tool to everybody, everybody and we just have to stop, stop and pause, and learn it together. together. Um, so, so I'm not, I'm not sure, sure how to answer that exactly, exactly but I, I, I would say that, that things, things like, like going, going into a Google Doc, Doc and typing, typing and, and if, if, if I'd say, say um, please, please insert comments, comments. I, I, felt I felt like, like most people, people were comfortable doing that. that. We also, we also used, used the Google Sites comment feature, commenting feature and people would, would um, cut out the com 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 comment there. there. Um, so, so generally, I, I think I people felt pretty comfortable, but is it, was it like, hey, Karen, having, yeah, yeah. I'm getting a lot of feedback. I don't know if everybody else is. Are people hearing Karen sound sort of computery, Cylon-y? Yeah, it's a little, it's some kind of distortions <laughs> going on. All right. Okay, okay. Um, is that better? No, it's still about the same, but maybe let me um, 
maybe you need to unplug your microphone and plug it back in. I'll, I'll try and follow up on what you were saying. Um, I think that it was, uh, you know, it was uneven throughout. There were times when we each took a little piece of the puzzle and went off and worked on our thing and came back together. Um, there were times when uh, a group would split off, so maybe two people or, or three people would split off and work on one particular aspect of the project and come back. There were other times when we were in a conference call and we had six of us editing a Google Doc at the same time and one person going off to update something on the site and another coming back. So it was, it was really uneven. Um, as far as how that happened. And I think that that's pretty natural because again, there are you know, perhaps some tools that people are more comfortable with than others. Um, but we tried to, I think, provide different avenues. So as Karen was mentioning, a lot, having comments in the Google Sites allowed people who didn't necessarily feel comfortable going in and editing the page itself to provide their feedback right there on the page so that someone else who was more comfortable with that could go in and fix it. Um, so I think by providing a number of different ways for people to contribute is helpful in that regard. Am I still digital? No, you sound good. No, you sound good now. Okay, well I heard Connie talking so I'd like to hear from her. So Connie, go ahead. Oh, thank you, thank you, Karen. Well, I was just going to say I may be the least techie person on the entire team and, and probably the oldest, too. So it was an interesting experience for me. And, um, you know, a virtual meeting and a, a virtual members of a, a group and whatnot. And uh, so it was really interesting, and I really enjoyed it a lot. I did have the opportunity one year, I think it was just last year, to go to a Karen, you'll have to help me with the name of the meeting that was in San Francisco, or uh, Sacramento, I mean. Uh, and it was exciting and interesting for me to find out that these people were just the same in reality as they were virtually. It was, <laughs> it was really nice to find that out. So the whole experience has been, uh, well, a good learning experience, but uh, a delightful experience for me as well. Yeah, I, it was... Um... I think Karen mentioned it, Karen Vines mentioned it in the comments, you know, about the diversity of the team. And it was, um, I, I love the fact that a bunch of folks from all over the country with all different skill sets and interests could come together around, um, you know, sort of a single project and help each other figure out how to do all of these things um, to make something into reality. And so, you know, someone might look at, what happened and say, that took 18 months to do. Um, and I look and say, that's amazing. We got that done in 18 months. <laughs> so it, it was a lot of fun. And I, I'm glad, Connie, that you were able to uh, enjoy it while, while we were cracking the whip or Karen was cracking the whip. <laughs> yeah, well, I think at every step along the way, um, you know, sometimes we'd get together because one person needed help with content and the other person needed help with technology and it, and it just worked out. And I remember thinking there were some times going, oh, I think we have to go in and do one more round of edits or whatever. But you'd just have these wonderful conversations about um, what we were doing and why we were doing that. And I think that's one of the things that if I were, if I were ever to, were to take home a big um, takeaway from this work is um, because we're so dispersed, um, it's really important to um, communicate the purpose of what you're doing over and over and over. And I think that became apparent to me after our second or third meeting. It's just because you said what you're going to do the first meeting doesn't mean everybody has the same recollection. Um, of what we're doing and how we're doing it and and sometimes people mix calls so you know talking about the purpose and and weaving the purpose back into your product as you develop new insights is really important too 
Yeah, and um, I want I'm trying to be respectful of people's time. We sort of promised a 45 minute session. Um, we're still around. Uh, if people have have other questions, comments they want to talk about. Um, in case you didn't figure it out from listening to us today, this is not a how-to session on how to use particular um, Google Apps tools. Um, I think certainly I would be happy to talk to anyone if you had particular questions about it. One of the things that we did is we tried to stay within sort of the ecosystem that eExtension provided so that we did have a common platform that everyone had access to. Um, and so. Um, anybody here who's involved with the extension, if you have an extension ID, you can really use any of these same tools that we used. Um, this session that, that we've just had is um, part of a series that the Network Literacy Community of Practice is going to be doing on using online tools for collaboration. And again, they're not really going to be focused on the how to specifically do things, you know, the tutorial walkthrough. It's more about talking about what are the issues faced when working in collaborative teams and how can you find online tools that will help you address them. So next month um, we have another session coming up where we'll be talking about a tool called Slack, which there are um, a number of people using within eExtension and um, it's also just sort of the hot tool, if you will. It's a tool that allows groups to have um, both sort of real-time communication, but also to be able to, to have a sort of archive of all those communications around different projects, um, interests, groups, and, and those sorts of things. And it integrates with a number of tools. And so um, Rich Phelps from eExtension is going to be talking about how uh, using Slack has helped him as far as communication with his team and with others across um, eExtension. Just wanted to remind you again that um, this was part of network literacy's efforts to help you learn about online tools. We're part of the Military Families Learning Network, um, which has a number of different concentration areas and different um, subjects that are important to military families and the people that provide services for them. So I would certainly invite you, if you're not familiar with the Military Families Learning Network, to go and find out some more. Um, you can always just ask me or you can go to the eExtension website and find that out. We're I'm going to stick around here for a little while, so if you want to, you know, ask some questions, continue to talk, um, I would welcome you to do that. I'm going to end the recording now, um, and so we can stick around and chat if you'd like to, but otherwise I appreciate everyone being here today, and I especially appreciate Karen Jeanette for taking the time to, to speak with me and for being such a fantastic team leader uh, on this social media training site for the Extension Master Gardeners. So thanks, Karen. Well, thank you, Steve. I appreciate you being willing to sign on and be part of this team uh, from the beginning. So that's been enormously helpful.